Welcome to the Mystic Media Channel. I'm your host, Rabino Rastavan, a.k.a. The Little Astrologer. And here is the first edition of my intimate interview series. And I have my first guest, Rhonda. And I'm just so excited about this interview uh, series. So I'm glad that I'm kicking it off with a writer because I'm a writer. So, you know, I love just writers. And it's funny because uh, over the weekend I was in California and I saw this uh, license plate and it had a heart and it said love to write. And I always say, you know, synchronicity is big in my life. So it's interesting that I saw that license plate and that I'll be interviewing Rhonda today. So uh, Rhonda, welcome to the Mystic Media channel and thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. And will you please introduce yourself? You could tell a little bit about yourself as well as the projects that you're working on now. Um, you told me that you are currently working on a movie review site. Yes. And also a romance novel. Yes, I am. Uh, my name is Lafra oh, Rhonda Stum. And uh, I, I, I'm living in Massville, Kentucky, but I lived in Dayton, Ohio for 42 years. And financial situation okay. forced me to come down to Massville. And um, I, I wrote a, a play when I was in Dayton. Uh, same person, celebrity, I had him as a love interest for that one. And this one will be in a novel form, different love interest and different story. Um, and uh, I went to school at Rice University. And I, well, well, I hadn't gotten my bachelor's there because of financial problems. But I came down here to Madisonville and I plan on getting an associate's here and getting a, a bachelor's at Arizona State University online for film and media mm -hmm. study, yeah. And um, hopefully with the, the first book that I write, I can use that money to finally for my tuition for, for uh, Arizona State online so I can get my bachelor's. But this, the, 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 the romance novel that I'm focusing on right now, it's called My One and Only Love. It's a Frank Sinatra song. Mm -hmm. No others sing it, but my favorite version is a Frank Sinatra version. And it stars a, I won't say his name, but it's a, a famous television star from the 60s and 70s and up to the 80s. And the love interest is one of the women in Waiting to Exhale. I won't say who. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's an interesting ah. story. And um, it's, uh, it's a story about uh, a belly dancer, Layla, who, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I gave up the name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, wait a minute wait 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 because now i'm like layla wait a minute it had oh layla was sean yes layla was sean i will say the man though please okay uh, okay and uh, she falls in love with an author of mystery novels and crime novels who wants to break in the film the screenplays and adapted screenplays for from his books they meet at a restaurant and he pursues her. She's very weary of him, but she has a dark past. Uh, she was uh, molested as a child and then she was sexually assaulted while she was in college. And that made her, she hadn't been with a man intimately and is kind of scared of men, but, and usually men don't intrigue her the way this man does. He has a lot of charisma, a lot of charm, and uh, she's kind of terrified, but at the same time, she's very much attracted to him. And they start a romance, and uh, her, their parents are not thrilled with it because they think he's a, a playboy, ladies' man. Um, and the problems that, that stand in their way are, uh, um, well, her past and his uh, ex-wife. Uh, she left him for another woman, and that was very traumatic for him. So uh, that made him second guess. Uh, and he went through he went through periods of, of promiscuity, but he also went through periods of being celibate. And he has mm -hmm. a son with her. Um, he's about ten years old. He has custody of the son. His name is Jack, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happens later on is they uh, get involved in, 
and he she takes she goes to all these places he wants to he goes to Cannes Films Festival because he has a film there that he wrote the screenplay for and he takes her there and he pretty much wines and dines her he's very very romantic um, very empathetic to what he was going through uh, and she's someone who has very major trust issues she uh and also her father was also a playboy womanizer. So she wants to know why am I with this man with, with this history? And he later tells her that it was mostly all an act. He just did that to, you know, to impress himself or self-confidence. And But he wasn't completely honest with her because he did have periods of proximity. Mm-hmm. But... Um, mm-hmm. He doesn't cheat on her in his in his novel, no, not at all. But um, they also are involved in politics. He just they both interested in it because of what's going on with, with the current stay in the White House, and mm-hmm. he's very political. He's very outspoken. He goes to he goes on social media, uh, trashing uh, the president, a different president name, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but. Um, yeah, and uh, she gets involved in politics, and that's something that they both have in common, and they're, they're all very drawn to each other because of politics. And also, they love love songs. There's not that many love songs on the radio nowadays. Mm-hmm. And she she's younger than him, about 16 years younger, but she's, um, she's someone who, uh, her favorite songs are love songs, so she doesn't understand mm-hmm. The, the music that nowadays it's uh it's all about hip hop and rap and mm-hmm. not enough variety in music and seem like R and B is just dead, which is very depressing to her. Yeah. So he goes to um old school, the eighties and the nineties, in the seventies too. I think after mm-hmm. two thousand five though, that's when R and B music started to go down in her eyes, the music okay. and uh, and she gives up her job, and he gets her a car, a place to stay, a condo, but she on the condition that she can move in with her sister. He's not thrilled with that, but he decides to do that. She doesn't want to live with him because she doesn't want to take him for granted. And she also mm-hmm. is a Methodist, African Methodist Episcopal Church follower, and she, I know she wouldn't be thrilled with that. She doesn't mm-hmm. want to feel that she has to train someone to think they're good enough mm-hmm. for her to move in. Now, let me ask you real quick. So you said that uh, the premise for your book is based upon one of the actresses in Wait, Waiting to Exhale. You already mentioned it, uh, Layla. So are you speaking about Layla's character in Waiting to Exhale or actually Layla the actress? I think Layla the actress. Is- um, okay, because you mentioned um, in real life. Okay. Go ahead. She's an Aries in real life, so I signed to make. Well, I signed and make her a Taurus like me because I didn't want to mm-hmm. be too close to her. Uh, so it's, okay. I guess it's, it's about Layla, uh, about her, and about Tauruses in general. I made that a combination of both. Mm-hmm. That's where I got it from, and. The man okay. who, the man who is uh, the love interest, I will say he is a Scorpio. Okay. Yes, I want. So you got that us. opposition going on there. Yes, uh, and which will make it interesting. The sexual attraction is off the charts, but she's too scared <laughs> to, to really initiate or, or give in, you know, because mm-hmm. but she does and. Um, now, let me ask you this. Are you going to incorporate astrology into the book? So are you going to like let it be known yeah. that, and talk about the, the challenges yeah. between, you know, dealing with a Taurus and a Scorpio together? Yes. And just his chart in general, I will talk about uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the chart and her and in terms of numerology, too. Mm-hmm. And she goes, she does, he does, they don't go together. She just goes by herself. And uh, she um, uh, kind of intrigued by his chart, but she's also realizes that his life path number, I won't say it is, but 
it doesn't center around relationships. And okay. uh, so that might be explain why his first marriage failed. And she wonders, but she, he does have a lot of two energy in his name and mm -hmm. in his chart. Um, I believe uh, they match up on a love level because his, his love son is Scorpio and she's, uh, she's um, a Taurus. So, I mean, that's deep, deep love attraction between them. Right. Now, so is the book completed? Like, it, are you finished with it or are you no, still writing it? So I have the outline. I finished the outline. And I will start okay. working on it as uh, soon as I can by the end of this year. And it won't be okay. out. It won't be out until I would say July, August. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And are you going to self publish or are you going to go with, try to uh, see if a publishing uh, house will publish it? Yeah, I want to get an agent too because okay. I, I want to book a literary agent. So I've been trying to get that book for weeks. This is backed up. Um, mm -hmm. hard. Now it's time for me to finally get the book. And try mm -hmm. to find a publisher, uh, if not in Kentucky, uh, in Ohio, where I was from, or Indiana, somewhere close to where I live. And uh, okay. hopefully they'll cover multicultural romances. And uh, okay. I think the, the book will be, I would say, like 288 pages, I think, approximately. And, okay. uh, and I'm also going to have the, 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 the title of the, the of the book, the song, it'll be their song, I Want and Only Love. And okay. uh, I will copyright that, and I will copyright Layla's and the other guy's name and uh, in that song as well. Now, I think it's interesting that you have a multicultural theme, an interracial relationship, because I was looking at your chart earlier, and I saw that you have your North Node in Sagittarius at the 21st degree. That 21st degree reinforces the Sagittarius theme. So I'm looking at that. But in terms of the practical sense, um, what was your inspiration for the interracial theme? Uh, because I believe this one celebrity, um, I think I wanted to know about more his love life. I mean, he's the type of guy that can attract any woman of any race. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if he ever dated a black woman in real life. Um, okay. Uh, what did he fall in love with one? You know, I, I, I kind of got fixated on this sign and uh, about him. And I do have a weakness for Scorpio men celebrities. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, so he's a Scorpio in real life? Yes, he is. Okay. Now you got me wondering, like, okay, who is this? But no. But um, so that's very good about this book project. So um, let's segue into the movie review site that you have in the works. So explain a little bit about this movie review site. Well, it is called CocoCinephileCritic.com. So CocoCinephileCritic. CocoCinephileCritic.com, yes. Critic. Okay, got you. And so it's already up? No, it will be up by the end of this year. Okay, got you. It is uh, about wide release films that are released, um, also independent films that, that get Oscar buzz. I want to okay. bring the Academy Awards to, to my site and... Um, yeah, I would talk about reviews, the film archive that I have, movie news, Blu-ray, DVD releases. I'll, I'll be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I wanted to get on Google Plus, but no one talks about Google Plus for some reason. Yeah. Uh, why not? Well, I see Google Plus more in terms of the video format, like how we're doing right here. Like I'll see a lot of YouTube videos where people will do it live via Google Plus, but in terms of like just interacting on Google Plus. I know I don't go on Google Plus at all, yeah. you know, because I have my Facebook, I got Instagram, all that type of stuff. So, yeah, I don't, but I do know that there are Google Plus circles of people. So, uh, I would suggest, you know, don't uh, skimp out on Google Plus, you know, hit all the angles. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. But, 
I see that in your chart too, the movie review site. Uh, I see the book in your chart. So um, I'm going to get into some of what I see in your chart in a minute, but I'm going to ask you uh, just a few more uh, questions about these projects. So in terms of the movie review site, uh, what do you feel are some of your uh, most um, some of your most challenging um, issues, or what are your biggest challenges in launching this website? Well, money. That well, it was money, but it's not going to be a problem. I have a job now. I'm in childcare. Um, but re really right now, the obstacle is I can make a lot of mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. I just want my punctuation, my grammar is pretty good, but my punctuation to be really good and accurate. It hadn't been the greatest mm -hmm. time this, but I'm going to work on that. And mm -hmm. so other than that, oh, just for marketing, I'm going to just use social media just to publicize this website. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to try Google Plus and in Instagram. I don't take a lot of pictures, so I don't know about that. But uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, and um, I think that's it. Uh, it's going okay. to it's going to gear toward. Uh, it's going to be a strong African American influence. There are a lot of great films out this year that that are, are held by African Americans with African American casts or multiracial casts, and mm -hmm. uh, focus on. Black Klansmen, and I wanted to see Widows, but I got sick. Um, I didn't get to see it. But um, <laughs> also Black Panther, I got a DVD of that. And um, if Bill Street could, could talk, I don't think it's coming down here. I have to wait to see it on video, probably. But And um, also, <laughs> I wanted to incorporate astrology later on about okay. the zodiac signs of the celebrities for the, because next month it'll be. It'll That's be, cool. And I wanted to do one on Nicolas Cage and Denzel Washington, Regina King, and okay. King, but I'd rather do Diane Keaton, but I don't know if they're <laughs> they're going to embrace <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, but um, and also I wanted to talk about pop culture and analysis. I wanted to talk about actors who should have gotten certain roles but didn't would have been really good in those roles because i don't think no one else okay has that on, on the internet so i'm going to talk about that uh pop culture my analysis and opinions and when i cover astrology and that probably be in the spring um mm -hmm. it will be about um couples who are compatible with each other or not oh sorry Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's something that I wanted to do for a long time. It's long overdue. And uh, it's something that I'm very excited about. I've been following films since I was 12 years old. And uh, I was a film critic for my Med Meadowdale High School in Dayton, Ohio. I was a film critic there. But um, a lot mm. of personal things got in the way. Uh, the sons is I, I I'm a life path number is eight, so they said they're okay. late bloomers, and I'm a late bloomer, all right. <laughs> yes. Now your son is at the eighth degree too, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, eighth mm -hmm. degree of Taurus. Yeah, so that reinforces the whole uh, late bloomer. But your son is in the eighth house, and that right there is good for critiquing, being a critic. And you got that heavy Pisces energy, which is, you know, that's the film industry, all that type of stuff. So both of those projects, they are like aligned with what, what I see in your chart all day. But like I said, I'll get into that in a minute. Now, um, where do you see yourself in a year? Now, you mentioned you would hope to have your book completed. And the reason why I say a year in particular is because the North Node's in cancer right now. Yes. And you got some significant cancer energy in your chart. But actually, uh, you got your Mars and Saturn. But actually, um, the North Node's gonna, not going to cross over your Mars and Saturn until 2020. So you know, still, um, that North Node in Cancer is still going to be good for you because you got significant energy in Cancer. So, um, where do you see yourself a year from now? Well, hopefully, graduating from Massville Community College with a degree in Associate of the Arts and Associate. Okay. And Went to a film festival, at least one. I want to go to one and join the 
the African American uh, Black Journalists uh, Organization, and uh, and join the African American Film Critics. That probably won't be until the summer. I want that to happen mm-hmm. really bad. And to renew my uh, interest in the Romance Writers of America and in the international mm-hmm. cultural website that they have. I didn't go into that yet, but that's thirty dollars. That that's nothing. And um. And hopefully I will make enough money this year to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. enough money to, uh, to get a car. Now I would like to have that because mm-hmm. I don't know how to drive and it's been a struggle for me because I've been mm-hmm. very shy for a very long period of time. And um, you I think you've been what? <laughs> shy. Can you hold on for just oh, a shy. second? Can you hold on for just a second, please? Sure, sure. Okay. So um, while I'm waiting for Rhonda to come back, hopefully you guys are enjoying this interview so far. I definitely am. Okay, so you got your water. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and what were we saying? So, um, Oh man, you're asking the wrong person because my short term memory is horrible. Wait a minute, you were saying, um, where were we segueing into? Oh God, this is embarrassing. And I was totally paying attention to everything you were saying. I don't want you to think that. But let me just uh, finish on to uh, what my question is. So, where was I at with my question? I said, I already, oh, okay, this is what I wanted to ask you. What if, so, I asked you about one year from now. What about five years from now? So where do you see yourself? Oh, oh, before I do that, you mentioned the driving thing. That's yeah. what it was. So you said you had, uh, you have issues with driving and you said because of what? Oh, you said you always been shy. Uh, yes, and, and uh, I didn't really have anyone teach me how to drive. Well, what's interesting, I'm thinking about that Gemini self know you have. Because Jim and I just were driving, and I'm like, that makes perfect sense. That you know, there's that issue with driving. You haven't really had nobody show you how to drive, all that stuff, and it's in the tenth house. So um, that's just very interesting. So you have that goal for the end of the year as well. Learn how to drive, get your license. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have oh, no problem. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. I'm sorry. So um, while I'm waiting for Rhonda to get back, so um, like I was saying, I just think it's uh, really cool that Rhonda is a writer, and I'm always interested in writers because, like I said, um, I'm a writer, so I could definitely relate, and Rhonda has some strong Pisces energy in her chart, so that not only deals with uh, her connection to film, her um, love for film, that also deals with the romance, the romance novel in particular. She got Venus and Pisces in the seventh. Um, she got Jupiter and Pisces. So yeah, she's definitely um, doing what she is destined to do in terms of these uh, projects. So I think it's just real cool. Sorry, hey, I'm welcome good. back. Thank oh, no problem. So we ta- we said I asked you where would you- where do you want to see yourself five years from now? Um, five years from now, I would like to, well, actually, a year, I'll go back to a year from now because I want to get out of Kentucky really, really bad. Mm-hmm. I want to a large city. Atlanta would be nice or Washington, D.C. Working for awards circuit or awards daily because I love those websites. Okay. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, or or, uh, I'll make enough money and get enough publicity, and I can move into a larger city and (coughs) see films that um, I don't have to wait forever, because I live in a small town in Madisonville, Kentucky. (coughs) Okay. So you don't have a major movie theater? The AMC movie theater, 
but um, only eight films are shown there. When I lived in Dayton, there were about three or four of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's no buses on the weekends or packed transportation. Okay. So, so basically, I have to go during the weekday. <clears throat> and what makes it more depressing mm -hmm. is that my, uh, my aunts, they don't like movies at all. So, <clears throat> and my sister in law in Dayton, Ohio, um, and my brother and uh, her son, my nephew, they go to movies all the time. Mm -hmm. I common with my family in Dayton. <clears throat> and my mother, she has since passed on. We went to the movies all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I usually like okay. family. I don't have that many friends, so. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me ask. So, who are some of your favorite actors? I love Al Pacino. I'm very attracted to him. I might do a story about him one day. Okay. Denzel Washington, I love him. Um, <clears throat> and I, I like Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. <clears throat> and for actresses, I love Viola Davis and um, <clears throat> and uh, Meryl Streep. <clears throat> I like Kate Blanchett a lot. Okay. After, I like the actors for a lot from the 70s, Jack Nicholson and Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman, even though he's in trouble well, recently for something he shouldn't have done. Was he this, is he part of that Me Too movement thing? Yeah. Dustin oh, wow. So he. Remember he flirted with a 17 year old girl on the set of A Death of a Salesman? So she was 17? Yeah, she was 17. She was an intern. Okay. Yeah, so. and women came forward saying they had an affair with him, even though he was married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if you had the chance to meet any actor, actress tomorrow, who would it be? Can I pick more than one? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick Moranis. Wow, I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah. I love him as an actor. I have a he, big crush he, on him. <laughs> I, I do. You yeah. know what? I I can see that. I'm not surprised. I like he's he's like that geeky type. He always plays that geeky type of role, but he does have he he's cute. You know, he's a cute guy. Yeah. I loved him in Ghostbusters. I love him. Of course, you know. Oh yes, that's one of my favorite movies. Yes, I, I love loved him. him. Seymour, I loved him in Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, that's where he was really cute. He should have got an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. He was really that good. Also, he like, was, and he sang and everything. <clears throat> he also was good in a movie called Streets of Fire. Oh my God, I love that. That's one of my favorite '80s movies with Diane Lane. Um. I forget the other guy, Michael Parr, um, and Amy Manikin. and William Dafoe, and yeah. William Dafoe. Uh -huh. Yes. I, oh, they be getting on in that movie, and they got the old cars up. Good movie. And uh, Robert Towns is in it. Um, yeah. He's he's one of the dudes in the group with Sony oh. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a movie buff too. So me and you, we could uh, be talking for a long time about movies. Yes. Now. What is your top three favorite movies? Um, there's a film called that made me want to be a film creator, Ruthless People, with Danny DeVito and Bette Miller. Have you seen that? What's it called? Ruthless People. Ruthless People. Yes, I've seen that. Wait, wait. Before you go on, let me rephrase this question because I already have it written down. I just said, say it right. So, let's say you have to spend two years in a log cabin in some remote area and you're snowed in, you got all the food and everything, but you can only bring three DVDs with you. What three DVDs would you bring? That's an excellent question. So I guess it wouldn't be with those people. It'd be in my top five, maybe. 
Um, okay. But um, what am I putting? I would put in the right stuff. I would put in now the right stuff. Refresh my memory. Who's in the right stuff? That's a as a as a space movie came out in 1983. Ed Harris, Dennis Quaid, Fred Ward. Okay. Remember she um what was his name? he just died recently. Jay Jessica Lane. What, what I forgot his name. But I love that movie. And another one. Um, it'd be Goodfellas. That's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Good fellas. Mm -hmm. And the third one. Um, hmm, a good question. The third one would probably be um, it will be a black film. And there's so many, it's hard to choose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, do the right thing. I, uh, I'm glad you said that because my next question, when you said black films, I was going to ask you how do you feel about Spike Lee? Are you a fan of his film? I'm a huge fan. He's one of the best. So, what's your favorite Spike Lee film? Do the I right do thing. The right. Also, love Malcolm X. Okay. Love Black Klansman. Um, let me see. Jungle Fever, which is a is a flawed masterpiece. Okay, um, yeah. Place of Wait a minute, did you say flawed? Did you say flawed masterpiece? Yes. <clears throat> so what do you mean by that? That's interesting. There's a lot of great things about Jungle Fever, except for the romance. I didn't see that was well developed. I couldn't tell. And she thought for one reason she loved him, but he thought it was just for interracial sex. I just didn't think their scenes together were were authentic. It was a disconnect there, and and as it really wasn't fully explored like it should. But there's so many great scenes in the Duty Right thing about when John Turturro talks to his so-called friends, and, and they're all racist and he's. Now standing outside of the window and he he's alone and all by himself. He doesn't really have anyone to talk to. Those girls who talk about black men, uh, Lynette McKee and and when when her husband Flipper leaves her for another that white woman. And the money going to that crack house. That's another. Is it so many great scenes? Yeah, um, that's I love that scene. Yeah, I give it three and a half out of four. Okay. Uh, the stars is now usually be four stars, one to four stars, or zero to four stars, like Roger Ebert did, because he's my favorite film critic. I follow him constantly. When I started, mm -hmm. I wanted to embrace uh, and kind of have a, a critic so I agree with. We couldn't even have, have telepathy. I first went to Leonard Maltz, mm -hmm. and him tonight. That didn't work. All my favorite films he didn't like. So I had to go to someone else. And then March 1987, I'm just looking up stuff on another actor, Dane DeVito, which I thought was really funny. And they were, he was doing a movie called Ten Men. I was trying to find anything about his interviews and what was he doing. And I saw they were reviewing Ten Men. It was on Channel 45 in Dayton on a Saturday. I would watch that. And that's when, and I got that book, Roger Ebert, who moved Home Companion. And that, mm -hmm. hey, what does people, three and a half stars? I knew he was my favorite film critic, and then, and, <laughs> and also, I also like Risha Schwarzbaum. She's not an Eric Hill Weekly no more. My favorite film mm -hmm. critic passed away or retired. So I guess now, like Peter Travers from Rolling Stone, and that black lady, okay. Carla Renata from the Kirby Critic. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think those are the ones that I like the best. Most of the critics, I just oh. disagree with quite a bit. <laughs> That's why okay. I miss so much. <laughs> Even though there have been disagreements I have with Roger Ebert, there weren't that many. But um, I think the disagreement with him on Fight Club, I didn't see that until last year. I went way Fight too. Club? Fight Club with Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. Yeah, so you, had, you hadn't seen it until last year. Yes, because Roger Ebert okay. thought it was, I usually agree with him. Uh, but uh, not this time. It is a masterpiece. It's it's brilliant. And maybe because I had dealt with issues like that in the past. Okay. 
the other one is Aaron Brockovich, which I knew from his review that it didn't sound right to me. Something was off. Because he didn't see Julia Roberts as an actress. He just saw her as a star. And, and I just didn't understand where that was coming from. And he was very angry mm -hmm. and agitated about her. I thought she deserved a nomination. Actually, mm -hmm. I, the person I wanted to win that year was Renee Zellweger for Nurse Betty. Uh, she's one of my favorite mm -hmm. actors, by the way. I couldn't mention her. <laughs> and, yeah, I've uh, seen Nurse Betty. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what are Central Writer? Do you have some words that are just like some of your favorite words? Like, do you, like give me three words that you really like to use. Well, I like to use uh, patience, love, and dreams. Because in my book, there will be dream sequences in my novel coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm glad you mentioned love because one of my questions is define love. What is love to you? Love is kindness, love is fidelity, and respect. Mm -hmm. and also, I want to nice. add to that too, empathy is another one. Empathy. Okay. And define God, if you believe in God. Well, do you believe in God? A yes, God? I do. Yes. Okay. So define what that means to you. I believe you were saying something earlier. I believe that God interacts in our daily lives. I believe uh, I don't believe in coincidences. Things happen for a reason. I believe that also nature plays a, a way of God through nature, and also I also believe in if God doesn't like something, it's going to come back to haunt you. You're not going to get away mm -hmm. with anything free. And also, that's why I believe in hell, because um, there are certain people who deserve to go to hell. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, Hitler's right on the list. Um, so I believe in, in heaven and hell. I was looking at someone on YouTube, and he actually saw people. He had a gift. He actually saw people who are in heaven and in hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if who, but... Well, I will say one person who is in heaven, and that's Richard Pryor. <clears throat> yeah, um, so that's how I feel about God and heaven and uh, mm -hmm. how I big picture and all that. Well, uh, that's pretty comforting. And no, uh, if Richard Pryor is in heaven, that makes me think I'd have a pretty good chance if there is a heaven. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because we all know how his life was. <laughs> well, I will tell you who is in hell, though. Uh, who? Um, Rick James. <laughs> so why Richard Pryor in heaven and Rick James in hell? Oh, wow. <laughs> He uh, asked for forgiveness. He had his MS, you see. And the mm -hmm. MS said God gave him this MS to save his life. So he um, asked for forgiveness and asked the Lord to forgive him for his sins. I don't think Rickard James ever did that. He was doing drugs up mm -hmm. until the very day he died. Okay. So you definitely believe that, you know, what you do in this lifetime, there's a place for you, whether that's heaven or hell. What about reincarnation? Do you believe in that? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if McLean believes in it, but I believe that there's like genes or there's ancestry. But what about the Hindus where they believe you uh, reincarnate into a goat? That's, I think that's strange or, or a geese. Or <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, the jury's still out with when it comes to reincarnation. Okay. Now, what are some of your turn ons and turn offs? And you can include, you know, men, dating men, stuff like that. Like, what are some things that turn you on? What are some things that turn you off? What turns me on is cologne. Uh, All that Pisces energy yeah. <laughs> you got. That deals with that. The tortoise, too, yeah. 
My turn to yawn are love songs. Um, uh, what turns me on is uh, good looks. Um, someone who has a, a nice job and has some money. <laughs> oh, oh hell yeah, yeah. That, that's always a plus or a must. <laughs> someone who has great integrity, who stands up for, he, who knows what he's right and what was wrong. And that's another reason why I like Scorpios is because they they're bold and courageous. They stand up for what's right. Um, and even though um, I think the majority of people are don't stand up for what's right, and the p people who do don't care what other people think. Mm -hmm. My family members who care way too much what other people think. Now, um, what would be your ideal date so like what would be the best date that a guy could take you on i would love to go to a beach uh front steakhouse and filled with jazz playing this, the saxophone the serenade wonderful beautiful mm -hmm. red rose and intimate and deep conversation and not dancing because I'm not much of a dancer. Um, mm -hmm. And just uh, after dinner, going to the beach and just cuddling and maybe a little necking and just spending time together and just being together and just feeling mm -hmm. safe with that person. And, and that's something that's very, very important to me. Okay. Now, about back to your book. Because I am curious, you know, I got Mars in Gemini, so when they, you know, I think about sex a lot, um, but more so in the research sense. Um, <laughs> so are you going to have sex scenes in your book, and how explicit will they get? Oh, they're going to become explicit. I'm going to be rated R, not NC-17, though. I was going to do role-playing, but no, it'll be... Certain aspects of the book that will be pretty racy. Okay. And when it comes to the sex scenes, um, are you using any of your personal experience or are you just, no. this is coming from, so like, how are you, like, what is your frame of reference? Is it, you know, movies you've seen? Is it just fantasy, like your imagination? How what? are you becoming inspired for that? A lot of fantasy, fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, also, a, a lot of books, how-to books about sex. Okay. And, um, that's where I will get my information on. But it'll, it'll, it'll deal with oral sex, and it will deal with uh, the missionary position. And, and but this, this I read from this one book where you can be in how the missionary position and. You can have the greatest sex, and you'll have her begging for more with, with this technique that, that they use, and I'm going to use it in this book. Oh, I believe it. That's, my, that's one of my favorite positions. I'm like, that position, you really can't go wrong. I mean, that's like you're like very close contact. Like You could get, really get the job done that way. So I yeah. totally feel you on that. Now let me see what else I got. Now um, let's take it more towards astrology on a personal level. So how well do you know your chart? Not really well. Um, just my love and my passion sign. I just found out my North Node was Sagittarius. I didn't dig deeper. Mm -hmm. My moon's in yeah. Leo. My ascendant is Virgo. Mm -hmm. That's how far it goes, I believe. My South Node's in Gemini. Yeah. I, you know, which, I, don't have, which I, always, I don't have a lot of hair. I don't get along with other air signs. I just don't. I, yeah, you got a lot of water in your chart. I got so that could be a, water. and your Taurus energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of my are Gemini and Aquarius. I just, just we're just so different. How we communicate. Okay. okay. Now. So you've never had your chart read by a professional astrologer? No. Okay. So that might be something you want to consider doing. But I, you know, I am here to tell you that 
what I see in your chart is very much aligned with the projects that you have going on. So I just wanted to talk about some of the things you have. Um, you got that nice eighth house influence. Now, while the eighth house can be tricky in some situations, it is good for like being a reviewer, especially because um, your Mercury's in the eighth and it's ruling your whole chart because you got Virgo rising. So Virgo rising period is good for a writer. And then you got Mercury in Taurus in the eighth. So that right there is more geared though, though towards being like a writer in terms of writing reviews, you know, writing, you know, critiques, being a movie critic, all that type of stuff. And then um, what's also beautiful is you have your son in Taurus and sex to Jupiter and Pisces. And that right there is really good for um, being a publisher. So you talk about, you know, your book getting published, but also it's good for being a critic of films because the sun is in the eighth house along with Mercury. So you have some um, nice uh, aspects. You also got moon in Leo, like you said. It's in sex to Pluto in Libra. That's another aspect that could deal with, you know, you reviewing, but that could put you in touch with some celebrities. Oh, wow. Because, yeah, oh. Look, I always tell you people, I always tell people, people with strong Leo energy in their chart, there's a very good chance that at some point in their life or at various points in their life, they're going to come across some celebrity in real life. So I, since you're already, yes. I had, you say? Two that, I had two celebrities that I met, one in Sinclair, one in Wright State, the colleges that I went to in Dayton. The first one was Cuba okay. to get out the vote. It was in a group of people. At the, at the library at Sinclair, talking mm -hmm. about voting, voting for Barack Obama in 2008. I'm surprised how short he was. He's short? I didn't know that. Five, seven, five, six or something, yeah. Okay. And the other one is Tom Hanks at Rice University. Okay. They did a, a, a meeting with him and talked about his films. He talked about Forrest Gump. He talked about uh, Toy Story, voice animation, and uh, I didn't get to see him in person. I just saw it with a group of people those other two times. Okay. So. Yeah. So j just so you know, like, you will be in contact with celebrities, especially once you get your website up, once you get your book published, all that stuff, because you have that Leo Moon. So mm -hmm. that is a plus. And like I said, with it in Sex to Pluto, that's like you doing the reviews and you basically analyzing celebrities and even actors in terms of their roles. And like you said, talking about one actor should have played this role instead of this actor, all that type of stuff. So that's that moon sex go Pluto all day. Um, also you have moon trying Neptune, which is good for doing something involving the film industry. So this also tells me that yes, you will be able to go to some of those award shows you might even be going to the Cannes Film Festival festival at some point in your life. Yes, with what I see in your chart, you got some um, nice aspects dealing with that. You also have Jupiter running parallel to the fixed star Rizel, and that Rizel means bringing knowledge to others. Mm -hmm. So you are called to do it. So that's pretty dope. And then you got Mercury running contra parallel to Arachne. Now that does deal with, you know, um, issues where you could end up, you know, bringing more trouble upon yourself than what it's worth. And that could deal with, you know, the issues with driving if you're not really comfortable. But I also see that as you creating these stories. So the book could be the first story, you know, and maybe it'd be a series of books with this first one being the first in the series. It will be a series of books. It will be a series of books. There'll be three of them. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's what the, that's where that uh, asteroid could come in. So you definitely have some. Oh, and you also have Saturn conjoined to the asteroid Cassandra. Cassandra deals with giving advice. You know, basically telling people, you know, this is good, this isn't good. You know, you should go see this, all that type of stuff. And then you got that strong Cancer energy, like I said. So that's where the race comes in. Mm -hmm. But you have. Your North Node in Sagittarius, and Sagittarius deals with that multicultural theme, the interracial theme, and all that. So, yes, you're also called to do that. So, 
it's just very interesting. And like I said, you got the North Node in Cancer, transiting North Node is going to be crossing over your Mars and Saturn in 2020. So that's going to be a major year for you. So you could probably be publishing your book in that year. You could also probably be, you know, really establishing yourself in, as a movie critic with that website that you're going to create, all of that type of stuff. So uh, we got about five minutes left in this interview. So I'm going to leave it to you to basically, you know, share your thoughts. You can um, leave your contact information if you want, but um, I know you don't have your website up just yet. So but we know that it's in the works. So once it is up and running, just let me know because, we could do, uh, I can just um, broadcast it on one of my videos and post the link at the bottom. But okay. I'll, leave, I'll give you the floor for the last five minutes. Well, I thank you. I appreciate your time and consideration. And it was fun talking to you. I had a great time. Hope I didn't sound boring. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you were good. Thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, you and you too for for this to, to, be, to be possible i wanted to do this for a long long time and and as they say better late than never um yes and that's all i have to say okay all right well i really thank you for um taking the time out to do this interview and like i said you're the first interviewee in my interview series so thank you very much and I wish you the best of success. I hope that everything uh, comes to fruition that you have in the works. And please keep me updated on your situation. So um, especially when you get that website up, because I would love to, you know, go to the website because I'm a big movie buff myself. One more question I forgot to ask you. So we talked about Spike Lee movies. How do you feel? Well, I'm going to ask you two questions. Basically, how do you feel about Tyler Perry movies and how do you feel about Lee Daniel movies since, you know, you're like, uh, you have this uh, focus on the black films? Tyler Perry's hit or miss, but most recently a lot, a lot of misses. Um, I think the Tyler Perry Halloween movies were awful. I think the only films I like of Tyler Perry were A Family to Praise. The best one was I Could Do Better By Myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Family Union. Todd Perry's Temptation and his second Why I Get Married. Other than that, they were they were pretty bad. They were poorly written. Uh, it seemed like he was mm -hmm. going to I bought Meet the Browns. I wasted twenty dollars. It was really really bad. It wasn't. It seemed like he was just going. He just didn't care. He just kind of takes kind of insult the black community by showing films and whatever he does and says people will go see him and I think what he does is mm -hmm. kind of pretty insulting I think he can do a lot better yeah he, he can Lee Daniels um love the butler and precious but mm -hmm. uh this new one I hadn't seen it but you gotta be kidding me yeah, he has an <laughs> he has an agenda and um yeah, I feel sorry. Oh, this is the one with Kiki, uh, what's her Palmer. name? Kiki yeah, Palmer. Kiki Palmer. I was, okay. And she's supposed to be some pimp, right? A female pimp? Yeah, Tom, I mean, Lee Downs wants all black people to be gay, I guess. <laughs> That's what he wants so, so bad. And I'm like, it's pretty. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, he. That's right. He is gay, and um, he has a white part. He not saying that that's a problem or anything, but it doesn't seem like he paints the black community in a negative light. Like I've never really liked his movies. I can't think of like he did Monsters Ball, right? How did you feel about that? Um, I think she gave great performances. Sex scene. <laughs> like when she was bent over on that couch. The sex scene was <laughs> over the top. The sex scenes were way over the top. And um very. Yes, it was I think she was a part of her wanting to destroy her marriage, I think. Anyway, um but yeah, I give it three and a half stars because the performances are so great. Okay. The the part where Heath Ledger and uh what's his name? I can't Billy I think Bob of Billy Bob Thornton. Thornton. That part was okay, you know, because that was very intense when he killed himself and all that type of stuff. But, um, yeah, I wasn't really feeling the whole premise of the movie and all that type of I, I just thought it was ridiculous. 
So yeah. So um, are there any other like what other black directors do we have out there? Well, there's Ava DuVernay. I hadn't seen her in a long time, but that and she did Selma and two other films. I saw. Did I see? I saw both of them. I forgot the titles of them. And uh, uh okay. Casey Levin. She's doing Harriet Tubman. And she directed. Okay. East Bond, and uh, and what else? Um, Love that movie. The, Talk to me with Don Cheadle. Okay, I remember that. Nativity Story with a. Uh, Horace Whitaker and Angela Bassett. And there's some okay. directors as Ryan Coogler, there's uh Eric Jenkins, John Single that I hadn't heard from him in a while. Yeah, we sure haven't. Yeah, F. Gary yeah. Gray. He's on the right. He the spare Oh, he did set it off. Yeah, the, yeah. the set it off and the negotiator was really, really good. And an Italian job, he's a really good uh director. Oh, I didn't know he did the Italian job and the negotiator. Yeah, well, okay. So he has range. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay, let me one more question. How do you feel about act I mean, musicians like how do you feel about like rappers and singers getting roles in movies when they're struggling actors out there? How do you feel about that? Well, a lot of them are great actors though. I mean, I can't see it yeah. being a rapper. Bad performers, except I think the only one who gives a bad performance, I think, is Snoop Dogg. But other than him, yeah. um, Belly no, Kujan, I'll tell you who Nas. Did you I ever see Belly? No, I hadn't seen Nas in anything. Check out Belly because his acting will make you cringe. <laughs> you will get all like, you'll, you'll for real, his acting is hard. He's a Virgo, his acting is horrible. And usually Virgos are versatile in terms of, you know, roles that they can play. Like Idris Elba, he's a Virgo. He's very versatile in terms of the roles that he can play. Tupac was really good. Tupac Shakur? Tupac was good. Tupac was a good actor. I think he was a better actor than he was a rapper, truth be told. Some people might try to crucify me for that. Nah, yeah. Some people might try to crucify me for that, but I believe he was a better actor than a rapper. And a lot of what he was doing in terms of rapping was the act anyway. Not saying that, like, he was a loose cannon because he was like a Gemini, all that stuff. But when he was acting like all with death row and all that stuff, he really wasn't about that life like that. He was more of the activist type of rapper. You don't see anything like that now except Kendrick Lamar and Chance the Rapper. They should be more than that, though. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. I'm trying to think. There was a couple of other rappers who couldn't act either that were in movies. But, um, like, uh, T.I., I don't think he's that great. T.I., yeah, uh, uh, he's okay. But what about Eve? What movie did she play in? Uh, Barbershop? Yeah, she's not a great actress to me. No. She, she needs to stay in her lane and just be that rich housewife at this point and her I, her fashion line sucks too that fetish <laughs> yeah she just needs to just sit down somewhere but yeah <laughs> actually she should come out with a new rap album yeah go ahead she's loving her white husband though you see <laughs> yeah he's a billionaire isn't he i wonder how long that's gonna last uh -huh. but yeah that i think that was just all about them coins for her oh, okay but yeah but Scorpio women, they can do well through marriage. You know, a lot of times they do come up through marriage. So, hey. But, uh, okay, so I could talk to you forever, so let me just cut it off now. So okay. thank you again for joining me for this interview. And like I said, please keep in touch and keep me updated on what you got going on, okay? Yeah, I wanted you to do my chart over the phone through PayPal. Okay. Just talk to okay, me. Okay, we could definitely do that. How, how does PayPal oh, work? Again? How does PayPal work? Well, oh, it's real simple. Like, all I'll do is just send you uh, my PayPal email, or you could just purchase the read and write off of my website because it's going to take you to PayPal anyway. And then you just have your credit card information you put in your card or debit card, either, you know, whether you have debit or credit card. Or if you have a PayPal account, you could just have have it coming directly out of your PayPal account. So like, but you don't need a PayPal account. Okay, I like the, your first option because I'm going to try that. And I'm going to get... Okay, so... Weekend. 
Say this again. I'm going to contact you this weekend again to talk about more in detail my chart. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So I'm going to send you an email anyway a little later on today just to, you know, do a little follow-up and all that type of stuff. But um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Tuning in. This is a, a pre-recorded, but thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if any of you would like a reading, you could go to my website at Rabina dot com peace and many blessings bye Rhonda. i will be in touch with you via email very soon okay thank you always a pleasure bob i have a blessed day